Okay, um, so I'm going to be doing um, a review on the Human Centipede 1 and 2. Now some of you may or may not have heard of it. Um, I think the ones of you who have heard of it would be like, oh I know that film, it's sick. And those of you who haven't heard of it say, oh I don't know that film but it sounds sick. Um, I'm, based, I'm going to review these um, these two films because I, I presume they've been reviewed quite a few times, um, not just on YouTube, um, throughout the press and on the web on on different websites. Um, but I'm decided I'm going to review this these two films as they are um, because they're famous for I say probably should say infamous for being really disgusting and completely controversial. So, but I'm not going to review these films and be like, um, ew, don't watch it because it's really disgusting and... Basically, I think these two films are basically to watch them because they, because these two films in, in themselves have sparked a real cult status um, in sort of the controversial film world. I think it's, it, they are films that to, you watch them to say that you've seen them, not to get any sort of um, enjoyment out of them. I was aware of the Human Centipede um, when um, I was discussing. We were discussing um, films um, with my brother, and he mentioned to me, "Oh, have you seen the Human Centipede?" And I said, "No." And he said, "Oh, no, it's sick." And um, eventually, some of my friends would say, "Oh my God, it's the." But basically, it was um, I came to made me aware of this. Was a, this was a new film that was the "Oh my God, have you seen?" film. And um, I'm quite curious when it comes to those kind of films. So um, I saw that it was on on the Sci-Fi Channel, which is a channel here in the UK. Um, I saw that it was on, so I thought, you know, since everyone's been talking about it, I thought, okay, what well, I see, what 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 it's like. I, mean, I knew I had I knew vaguely the story behind it, and um, so I, I decided I'd watch it. And if I'm completely honest. Um, I thought throughout, I think the first half hour in, into watching it, I thought it was a parody, a comedy, because, I mean, I wouldn't say the acting was bad, it was just a bit, it was very tongue-in-cheek, the acting, and it was, um, very, I don't even know what the word is, but it just didn't seem like, like it was going to be scary or disturbing. I think one of the main things I picked up on on the first team of centipede is that it, it wasn't as disgusting as what people made it out made it out to be. Um, it, it's more of a case of like all the disgusting things sort of happened off screen. Like, I mean, for example, the surgery where he sews them up together. You you see bits of it, but not not a lot of the whole. You don't actually see the whole process. You only see bits of it, and they're, they're not that extreme. Um, the um the coprophagia scene isn't that isn't that graphic um yeah so the first one's more i think more psychologically disturbing because it has to i think it re relies on the um, audience's um imagination to come up with you know the pain that they're in and what you know what the hell they're actually going through the acting um i think i think the acting kind of let me down a little bit. Um, I think if you want to be, if you want something to be believable, obviously you have to be give believable acting. And I, and I think in a film like that, you if to truly scare an audience in a horror film, whether it be not just a um, slasher film, whether it be a psychological horror film, a slasher film, um, a gory film, um, in horror you need to be make it believable to, in order to scare the audience into thinking that could happen to them. So I think you need to have. I just wish the acting was a bit more realistic. That's the that's one of the criticisms I have of it. Because in some parts, particularly at the beginning, where we with, with the two girls, um, before we were introduced to the house and the mad doctor, the acting was so over the top at times that I literally thought it was a a spoof or a par parody or a comedy of a of a horror film. So uh, yeah, I think the acting should have been a bit more believable. Okay, now I'm just going to quickly just review the second Human Centipede, then I'm going to do sort of like an overall review of the two films together. 
Um, basically, the second one um, came out in the U in the UK, heavily cut. Um, well, I say heavily cut. There were three scenes cut, but each scene was a bit extreme. Um, so I suppose in some some terms you could say it was heavily cut. Um, basically, it was released in the UK at the beginning of November um, on DVD, and I was in HMV and I saw it and I thought. I just basically said to myself, oh, go ahead, buy it, you sick fuck. <laughs> um, so I bought it just to, I just, really just out of curiosity, I just wanted to see if I could handle it, and, you know, I've got quite a strong, i got quite a strong stomach, so I just wanted to see if I could handle it. Um, basically, I'll just give you the sort of gist of the, of the movie. It's basically a film within a film. Um, it's basically about a, it's set in London, and this, um, uh, mentally ill, um, overweight slob named Martin, um, who is a mute. Well, I don't know if he's a mute, but he doesn't he doesn't say utter, utter a word in this film. But um, I don't think he's a. I wouldn't say he's a mute, but he you don't see hear him speak throughout the film. Um, basically, he has an obsession with the human centipede, the first one, and. Um, he dreams of making a 12-person centipede, and the first one, um, the doctor made a three-person centipede. Martin dreams um, of making a 12-person centipede. Um, his life's pretty crappy. He's got um, a mother who's something... It's quite clear there's something wrong with his mother, but it's not quite um, clear what. And it's clear throughout um, flashbacks um, that he was a um, victim of his father's abuse as a, as a child. So basically he's, um, with all that going on, he's not really, um, he's not really right in the head. And basically he um, works as a car park attendant in an underground um, car park in London. And, um, but sort of like the grim side of London. And um, he sort of kidnaps each of the, each of the, sorry I can't speak. He basically kidnaps each of his, each of his victims as they drive into the car park and um, bundles them off into his van and he um, takes them to a warehouse. Now one of the problems I had with, the, with this film is that um, the whole sort of kidnapping process of each of the victims was so, was so quick. In fact, I think f about two minutes into the film he kidnaps, he kidnaps his first victim and it's because of this, we aren't really given any kind of character story to any of the victims, so therefore we can't sympathise with them, and then therefore we don't feel as we don't really feel sorry for them when they suffer at the hands of Martin when he sews them all up together. I mean, there is one who's like there's one who's um, a woman who's pregnant, um, and there's a woman who's got a young uh, baby. Um, so there is a kind of like you do kind of feel for like a, a mother and a pregnant lady um, but in terms of like um, sort of feeling for them it's quite hard to because we don't really know much about the victims anyway and also with the second one I think actually I think with both films but mostly the second one because I think the first one had a more solid plot to it so um, while you were still sort of trying to handle the um, gross factor um, you still have some sort of plot to follow. The second one, it does have a plot of some sort, sort but it's just basically he, um, it's just basically a whole build up to the last third of the last third of the film, um, where he, um, you know, makes his creation and he tortures it, and um, so I think it's more of like a build up to the, because it's basically all it is, he just kidnaps people and picks them to a warehouse and then creates his human centipede. Um, so I think the first, the second one is more, really more to watch it, just to see if you can handle it, really. Now just to review the whole sort of Human Centipede sort of franchise. Um, are they good films? Well, if you think about it, if, um, if a horror film scares you, it's considered a good film. If a comedy film makes you laugh, it's considered a good film. If a thriller, um, you know, keeps you excited and on, on the edge of your seat, uh, it's a good film. If a disgusting and controversial film disgusts and offends you, then 
is a good film. Um, well, seeing as both these films do that, it's kind of... If a film does what it's meant to do, then is it a good film? I mean, by saying a film is disgusting, when it's meant to be disgusting, it is kind of hard to say whether it is a good film or not. Um, I mean, I didn't enjoy both the films. I don't think anyone could really enjoy the films. Um, but they did gross me out, and they were supposed to, so... Basically, all, okay, all I'm going to say about these films is that they are what they are. Now, one of my sort of theories behind the Human Centipede, um, the Human Centipede film franchise as a whole, um, is that m maybe, I mean, I'm probably completely wrong about this, but maybe Tom Six, who is the um, brains behind the Human Centipede films, maybe he, he kind of intended them to be a parody. Not... No, I don't mean the actual films themselves, but maybe the entire idea of the human centipede to be a parody of horror films that are mainstream nowadays. Because I think, and not just mainstream films, I mean even the uh, low budget horror films that we have nowadays, not just nowadays, the ones we had like, I mean horror B movies have been going since the 50s and 60s, um, or even, even before that. Adrian, maybe the the acting in um, in the films, in the Human Centipede films, was like a... The fact that it was over the top and a bit too tongue-in-cheek was maybe a parody... Like, it was deliber deliberately done as a parody of um, tongue-in-cheek acting done in um, you know, proper horror films, which um, I'm sure we're all, all aware of. Um, so maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but... Um, yeah, I think maybe it's just a parody of because the, the film is so film the film's plot and um, idea is so ridiculous and so so pointless that um, you know it's kind of like maybe it's just a parody of like kind of like the different kind of stupid ideas that horror films have nowadays, particularly the B horror films and the over the top acting. I'm probably completely wrong, but um, yeah, um, it's not really much to say really about the human side of it. It's it's more of a thing like. Um, it's what you make of it, really. I mean, to be honest, they are they are what they, what they are, and they do, you know, they are disgusting, but they're meant to be disgusting, so it is kind of hard to say whether they're good films or not. There's another thing I would say is, even though I think the actor who played um, Martin, um, even though the second Human Centipede isn't a classic and it won't win any Oscars or anything like that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he got picked up from this because he he always has this sort of like classic villain look about him he always has like a sort of like a, a kind of a Peter Lorre kind of look about him and um, and I think because I think making him a mute in the in the film it kind of gives like I me mean, if biting if directors are watching the film looking for new actors I think maybe the fact that he he is quite reserved and that he isn't wasn't given given a speaking part. I think maybe it would give directors kind of think, oh, what what can he do? So, um, but he has almost like a perfect sort of villainous um, villainous look about uh, look about him. And um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he got you know if he got picked up for this. Um, so yeah, I really hope you've enjoyed um, my review. If you like. I know it wasn't really a review, it was more sort of me discussing it. Um, um, I don't know whether I would recommend it. It's, it is disgusting, and if you think you can handle a disgusting thing, then you should be fine. But if if you're quite squeamish, then don't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with it. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for watching, um, and I will see you all soon. With uh, slightly more nice reviews. Bye-bye. <laughs>